Hello! Down here, and we're back to find a space to survive. Last time. Oh, we come back up where we were. Charlie, get off! That's saying John Hamper, so he called. Help Charlie, I guess. Charlie just dead to her for a second. Two sick chicken to Wester to crash. He was not even question, he was shouting at you. He stamped his foot on Charlie's neck with Charlie's neck Foxy's neck there. Repeatedly, and then in one quick movement, he grabbed Charlie's hand, heated her up, and started to run, pulling her alongside. They needed to the main dining room. The rest of the group was huddled in the middle of the room. Louis, Charlie was to join them. He could tell she was limping, but he did not feel any pain. Which, she really liked. Dimly in the back of the night was not good. When they got to the others, her all sang. The faces were grim. Mamma was holding the flashlight up to front of him, but Watson was trying to get. Mamma gestured quickly to the entrance group. Freddy stood up forward to the store room, while Barney now blocked the hole into the office. Seeker reanimated. Still on the stage, moving over there, Charlie grabbed back the way he was caught, they had to tell. Foxy was approaching. He had freed himself. He stopped in the doorway as he reached for a finger. There was no escape. Suddenly, a cutie roar of everything around him. Charlie noticed someone lose his butt. Oh! Dan, 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 dan. <laughs> it's now just a thing to me to do that, I mean. I'm so, why, whenever I heard the word music, wow. <laughs> I see she had unconsciously been here all along. She took a deep breath the moment she seemed to go on well. How they contradict? They were trapped. They waited. Now, perhaps we had some. There was some hope. Charlie crossed her eyes a while. Keep Charlie for a weapon. But the only part she had some paper print. As one of the animatronics started their pull. Charlie grabbed the back of a metal folding chair. Not sure how she would could even use it. Rolls were moving faster now, coming in unison, as if this battle was a cold Afghan. Small took Jason's hand and whispered something in his ear. Now he shook his head. Said the jaw and bored his hand in his fist. I'm all questioning for a moment, but said nothing. Jessica's was stiffly at his side, and she was murmuring something to herself in, in old blue. The animals were all was on top of her. Betty's funky water pre off. She had a toy, and the leaves that nose were coming from face rest, but inside face. Bam, bam, bam. bam. She now realized. She could reach from the stage and took a small, bouncing step towards her. As if the sight stood behind herself back. Bonnie's big, poor white feet surrounded her down her shower. Her foxy shrunk forward in a merriment gaze. The guy took up Charlie, as if she was the only thing he saw. Gazed into his silver eyes. They filled her vision, crowding uh, out everything else into the world of silver. The world was Foxy's eyes, and there was nothing left of her. John screamed her, it broke the spell. He looked at her, and called Charlie? Yeah, said Hansi. Charlie? Said Hansi. Charlie? Later. He nodded, accepting the lie that 
it will be a waiter. Foxy cast down again. Charlie was Charlie was still a jaw. Her arm bounding as if braced for it. Foxy jumped and fisted in the pocket as he prepared to spring. Then he stopped. Charlie reached it. There was no screams behind him. No sounds of fighting. In the music box was silent. The motion he decided to go. Stop. And then he saw. And then he saw. Was Freddy. Not the one that. Or knew. Not the one who stole left the phone away from Mark. After that, the police left. It was the old one. The one she remembered. The old Freddy from the diner. Golden Freddy. The costume her father used to wear. It was looking at them. Staring from the court. And now she heard something. A thing to sing. And just whispered it in her head. The senses to her rolling through a concert now without taking hold. Dublin and the air headed to it. It didn't stifle, but the moon was unmistakable. Carter was the one to say, Michael? The sounds they heard grew warm. So they caught. They, they passed close to Golden Bear. Marl brushed down past Brown Freddy, as if he were not there. So I turned back. Foxy, I think. She was the only one for a laugh. So, here. They were almost to him. All Charlie wanted to do was sing her arms around her. Only close and to be again to and to be again the little girl she was formed of. Place her again. This brother child who had been ripped from their lives on that carefree afternoon. To do it all over. This time to rush him. He died. She was. Michael! She was sick. The old bird stood motionless. Unlike the others, there seemed to be nothing sad. Only caught by his own will. This was not the whole room. Caught the door closed. The eyes were empty. Telling a word at their back room. Astonished. Charlie startled and turned. The steady bunny ticket of uh, Foxy stood at the way. Almost as they were back on the stages. The eyes were locked on Charlie, but they halted it and told. The kids, Foxy whispered. Foxy was injecting faith in Mars gas. Foxy was trying to protect him. John took heads to step down the Then pulled more balls. Look at his door, what's it? He was the kid, yes, sir. All of them. The face was no longer amethystic, no longer righteous, as if some spirit commanded it there. Suddenly there was a crash and he had edged his door. They all started, turned to as one. As the wall beside the rear edge shook with the force of dozens of balls. What now? Charlie thought. The bricks broke and fell, shattering in pieces across the floor. Dust swirling in cool, a gusty cloud. A figure, or really a massive shredder, did it so he could. They saw who it was. Craig Bruce caught his ball. Whoa! He started to sit on coffee and he dropped the hammer and went to his desk. There would be. Place those hair. Feeling like he had never let them go. Try to phone from a distance. Just by the sore edge of envy. Dad, I'm going to poo. Dad, I'm going to, I'm going to puke, Carter murmured. Play that, but leaned back when he saw Carter was a kid. Carter better look. 
anti-aging wax. A crazy. Oh, thank you. I'm good. Crazy was not with the animal. We're looking at the at the animal. All the time was frozen time. That's true. Okay, kids. Crazy says, "Where to go?" And it's very careful. I think it's time to go. He stayed so together. To hear me. They got some money on. The whiskers were gone. Well, Brandon, he was stuck again in a empty suit. So no one had seen him move. John nodded towards Crash, and the rest fell forward, heading almost roughly to the hole in the wall. John ran back. John stared beside him, but he just stood him forward, keeping up the lead. He had time to take a step when Puffy took hold of the foot. Trying to cry out, but her windpipe was being crushed. She was whipped around as if she was weighing nothing, as she found herself face to face with the yellow rabbit. Dave's eyes were shining through her. Try out this. He had his arm around her neck. He had felt so tired that she gave sleep. The so cold was almost unbraced. She could spell the coffee, being fair and use of sticky thread. But the teeth, he spoke still very sharp. You are staying. Ah, through the, the no. Grace said, take on the group of four. They don't. Uh, but, but, I will kill this one right here while you are, unless you do what you say. And his voice was almost pleasant. Craig looked at her for a moment. Tell me, then not. Okay? Very soft. Oh, we do what we want. Thank you. Good. Good. He lost his grip on Charlie's neck. They get back. Craig began to move forward. And he was soft. Charlie looked up the man in the rabbit suit. Yeah, I've messed her. I mean, you messed her too. It was you. You killed Michael. You killed Sally. You took them from me. He died. So that's. Puffy tears at the end. Then windows we all pull us out. But they were only empty. Went and empty. Charlie pointed eyes into the gap. That but If you want to be one of them, then be one of them. She shouted, and she tripped the finger. These eyes widened, and he then he screamed. Charlie jerked her hands free. Breathe. With his back open and punched in his neck. She took a step back, watching these crumble to the ground, still screaming as the coffin reached part by part. Charlie sighed, pierced his sweat, whipping up his throat. Okay. Tearing through his body as if not there. At some point, he stopped screaming, but he was still with on the floor. For what felt like one minute before he was dead. There, breathing hard as he. Running, daily running the floor, the floor of the ground seemed unreal. John was the first to decide it, but those things down, he laid them off before she could, she could touch her. She could not bear it if she did. Grass, and they all walked up to his room. She was back, holding the gas, but none of the animals looking at her. One day one, they Oh, fault. Began dragging it to the hole. She spit it down the hall. Charlie noticed that the yellow feather was gone. That's gone, kind of, said Clyde. Craig nodded and they fired the officer for the last time. Oh, chapter 13. Last chapter. I'm probably going to get through this in the next portion. It's all. Let's see.
nine pages, so let's do this. The sun was still rising as they emerged into the open air. Craig put his arm on uh, Carter's brother's shoulder, and for once Carter didn't brush away with his jaw. Charlie nodded to drink in the way. Carter and I are taking a drive to the ER. Craig said to me. Is there anyone else who needs a doctor? I'm fine, Charlie said with Jason, Jason, do you need to go to the doctor? Mara. No. So, I let let be interested. He thought as Jason held his leg up for Craig Sanders. Charlie fell off we well. A golden hole it was in charge now. At the moment Craig looked out at Jason with serious face. I don't, I don't think we're gonna have to cut it off, he said. Not just yet, Jason said. Ah, oh, yes, a great turn tomorrow. I take a care of it. It might leave a scar, but that looked tough. Well, he nodded and looked at Jason. He laughed. I need to change my clothes, Charlie said. It seemed to uh, seem to be worried about, but I sure the pads were wet with blood did something different of it. It was beginning to it. You're a mess, Carter soon points out with all of me. Will you get a check in if you drive then? Charlie, are you sure you don't need to go to the hospital? Ma said. Telling her that he'd like to see her friend. Now that her brother's been to her space. I'm fine, Charlie said the I just need to change my clothes. We start in the hotel. When they reached the car, they spit into what they come this after group. Well, Jason, not my mother's car. Uh, Charlie, John, and Jesse and Charles. Charlie opened the door to the driver's side and stopped. Looking back at the building, it wasn't just there. Out the corner of the eye, she could all see it. It was dark against the pink stained glass. Long and squat, like something good and strongly. They all turned away seeing to the cars without speaking. Charlie kept her eyes on it, watching as she stared as she started her car. She seemed to turn her back into the last question room. She pulled out the lock and drove away. Oh no, the car spit off. Craig and Carson took the other turn out of the parking lot, headed to the hospital, and Charlie turned off the, uh, the hotel when Mars continued to, uh, to the roof shower. I call first shower, said Jeff the guard of the car. Then she charged him. Jesse and Steve, you go first. Charlie nodded. In the room, she got her bag of bathroom here with her, leading John and Jessica to wait. She locked the door behind her and undressed deliberately, not looking at her on arm and leg. She didn't need to see what was there, just the cream and bandage it. She got into the shower and left her. I cried yet as the steaming water hit her open cart. But she gritted her teeth and cleaned herself, brushing her over and over until it was windscreen. She got out and towed herself dry. She sat down on the edge of the tub, put her face and closed her eyes. She was not ready to go out yet, not ready to face what her after that, whatever disgusted them to be. She walked away after this battle, never seeing what again what happened. Temple. She didn't have an anger, but there was pressure there. Something left in there. We can't stay here forever. Charlie the grave. The tape from the first time in a while. She took it from her back. Wife both who was down town. I bound her arm a leg using all the grace. It probably needs stitches before.
But it was only an idle thought. She would not do it. She got a... Oh, I went to open there. There was a cross across the cheek. It stopped being, but it was ugly. She didn't know how she would cover it. But she didn't really want to. For the same reason she didn't want stitches. She wanted them to heal wrong. She wanted them to scar. She wanted to prove. Despite our body. This happened. This was real. This is what it did to me. She dressed Christy and I changed and last the new priest dress and I met for the bathroom to wear injection John reach out to call. I figured there was no point in me stopping at this day. Well going in the morning, we might as well bring all the carters. Not did I grabbed grab John his backpack. Take it out to the car with her all. Carson and his father were always back by the time they arrived. And again, they entered Carson's living room. Now, almost familiar, Carson was killed up in the archer by the fireplace. Somebody had lit a fire. Amar and Lamar were on the couch. Jason was sat his right in front of the fireplace, staring in at the licking thing. Charlie sat down near him. Only just sat stiffly. John joined her, looking at her with concern, but she ignored her, and he said nothing. Are you okay? Charlie asked. She got a woolly cotton arm for a moment. She looked at her sweetly. Yeah, to my question, he said. I'd be fine as long as no one tries else tries to murder me. So, now what? Jessica asked as she took the chair beside Carter. I mean, she paused. Just before the world. What happened? She said finally. They look at each other. It was like the question they all have. I believe you have to stop me like this. Charlie looked at Craig, who was standing in the door, only half in the room. Mr. Craig, what happens now? She said finally. After this one, before, yeah, before asking. Oh, Charlie, I'm going back to Craig. I have to get my option in the game. I won't go along before the slide, but no one joined us. What do you think should happen here? Sorry, I've seen her uh, this impossible question. Who could ask me? She nodded it. She won't drop it. Nothing, she said. It's all over. I want to leave it that way. Craig gave her a nod. Face impassive. She could not tell if after he was looking at her. Oh. But it was all she had. The others were silent. And Alma was nodding. But Jackson was looked to want to protect. Jackson, what? Charlie said gently. Refusing on Eve that her friend wanted to face to this group. Just seems wrong, she said. So about everything. I mean, people should know why. That's how it works. That God, he made all those kids. A people should know. That won't work for you, bro. He said, not looking at him. What's it done? Just said. What's it done? He died in there. What do you want to tell his family? Will you tell them the truth? She won't get crap. Arthur Don died at the hands of the same man who killed your friend. I can prove that now. See? So the won't bring them back, Charlie said softly. But maybe we'll give them some rest. Craig just turned his eyes to the fire. And a few minutes passed before it does get. Your kids have been telling Freddy for you all these years. Charlie left it behind. She said. With Dean, but his commanding told what she is short. She is. She is that off don't give her boss belly. Was quite himself, although what he next required effort. Your friend, too, the trial board. I have a few things to call in, but I can make this happen quietly. The last thing I want to do is stir up that thing, or death thing. 
Those kids need rest. The next morning, they began to scold us several ways. Mama also drawing one more attraction to his birthday, and they said their goodbyes and hugs. So I, Charlie wondered if any of them meant it. Mama probably did, at least. They pulled out the driveway. So my boss is in till later, John said, and Mama's car disappeared. I'll bet you will. I may have a few more hours in the hole, came Charlie answered to her. Sky, he really was it was true. I said, Chris, almost never tired. Okay, Dad, said, let's get out of here. Let's go somewhere, anywhere. When they were on the car, John gave us a sideways glance. So, he said, are we ever going to see each other after this? He tried to say lightly, but there was no one to like in it. So I stared at her. He had, Maybe, he said. He could not look at her. It wasn't the answer he wanted. He knew that, but he could not give her what he wanted. What could she say by way of excuses? It's not for you. It's the way we both bear. Too much. When you are here, I can't know. But some of your thoughts felt off. Not quite right. Uh, if she was speaking by no rope, pick off a script. It was switching and structure to protect her into before the memory it had needed. She finally looked at John beside her. He was staring through the windshield. He saw her jaw step. I have to go somewhere. I need someone to need to go. He said abruptly. Then they are sure you to. She had never gone to visit the place by now. Without worry, her mind was consumed by it. Certain had never suggested it. Charlie had never asked for what. So and now she goes ahead there. The answer perfect. I need to see it. Charlie pulled the stop in a small gravel parking lot beside a low fence with short white posts. Jane soon knew Petrina. I just need a minute, she said. John gave her a kiss and walk. Are you sure you want to do this now? He said. She did not answer. Just got out of the car, closed the door and the gaze of us before them. They're almost home, you know. But there was a worse grass than she to. This corner was at the edge of the cemetery. There was a house only a few yards past the edge of the fence. The grass was turned neatly, but it was patchy and yellow. The trees had been pruned too far, so the low branches were bare, too exposed. There was a telephone pole set in just inside the fence, barely on the cemetery ground, and beside it were two headstones. Charlie stared at it for a long moment, not moving. He tried to conjure up the right thing, brief and not, so that he could not all stare some moment. The graves were there, but the sight did not touch it. So could they stare at their children. Such a soul memory, moment that meant nothing at the time. Just one day and here's the day, the same or the other. Seven, six, two. And before every girl fed beds and warm, before every bed, they were sitting up back at the look over the hill. A cold landed past me in the bed, looking for someone. There was something about the jar mm, that still did the funniest thing. So I began to laugh when her father looked at her. He turned and he pointed he turned his head. Then she asked him. But he could not tell what he could not tell what he was pointing at. He could not get too close to it. He did not know the word. Right it was the first So too. Suddenly he laughed and pointed to crow. The unmet man looking at her with a set of pure boundless of the light as it will fill her. There's a post channel left, he said. And there we go. That's Five Nights of Freddy's The Silver Eyes. Honestly, I love that book. 
it kept me going from moment to moment. And even if I had a big break in the first four out of the first four chapters, it gave me more time to think about them. And then, yes, I gave him took a break again after the next four. But that was just to think about them as well and to give my voice a rest. But now we finally finished it. This is a normal book into the Tristan one. Yeah, I'm definitely going to do that one. So, see you guys never. Because I'm never doing this book again. Dumb book. So, you can wish into all it. All 30 episodes. So, see you guys never.